I'm Andrew. Hey, and I'm Steven. We're brothers and we're watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood for some reason. Because it's the only way that we can stand to be in the same room as each other. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Alright, well, hello podcast neighbors. It's hello. A, it's a beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, isn't it? It's it could be. It's hard to tell because it's black and white, Steven. That's true. We're uh starting off with episode one. It's a weirder show than you probably think it is. Yeah. Um it's bonkers. And there's just a lot of like content. <laughs> there's a surprise for a very slow show. A lot there's a lot happened. of there's mad a lot issues. to unpack. It, yeah. Like, we both watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood as kids. Yeah. On PBS. Yeah, I, uh, I think I didn't enjoy it as a child. I think, I, like, I watched it, so I must have, I think I liked it as a child. And then Uh at some point, I aged out of learning about up and down. Mm -hmm. And it didn't stick with me the way, like, your Sesame Streets or other things. Because it was, it was, he's, it's kind of a square show. Or it seems like. Yeah, I as a child, I just thought it was super boring. And like, yeah. like you're watching it because this is how to pass your hours of... So there was there was definitely a period where it's like, oh, Mr. Rogers, he's the less cool and so Mr. I, Dress yeah, Up. Yeah, Mr. Dress Up was like the cool artsy one who I was Canadian. a fan of. Uh, but Mr. Rogers was like, oh, I'm just watching this to get through the day. Uh, yeah, but then uh, the other day I was, I just like on a whim because I wanted to research a joke for Twitter. I <laughs> Is that what this all started? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I popped open an episode on YouTube and I was like, wow, there's a lot to did unpack you ever, Did you ever tweet the joke? Yeah. I tweeted that and many other jokes. Okay, and so then we'll once I had about was. five jokes, I was like. This, this, this can is a be its podcast, podcast worth of tweets. Thank so anyways, you. we're going to sort of rediscover Mr. Rogers again for the first time. Along with you, uh, lovely Along podcast you. neighbors. We're probably not going to hit every episode because there's a million of them. There are uh, 897 episodes of Mr. Rogers, I believe. I, I heard closer to 900, but it's in the ballpark of 1,000, which is... You, you, you heard closer to 900 than 897. <laughs> I guess I sort of stopped listening after the 800 part of your number. Well, that bodes well. Anyways, uh, yeah, we're kind of going through uh, what has been made available in the best of volumes that have been released. Yeah, it on... seems like it's mostly weak chunks, which is nice because there's a bit of continuity of all things uh-huh. in Mr. He... Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, so uh, so you can find these episodes if you want on uh, iTunes or Amazon or just sketchy places on the internet i mean if you're not afraid of those seems seems very rude of us to suggest anybody do anything sketchy to find mr rogers neighborhood i i i'm not gonna judge it's out there yeah um in very legal responsible places so if uh if you want to watch the episode yourself before you hear us start talking about it you can uh Pause this now and track it down. You're going to have to, because we're not going to sit here for a half an hour while no. you watch. Uh, so starting off... Um, we are starting with the sort of first episode yeah, do of tell. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. So this is episode... In most places call it episode one. Technically, it started in 1953... There was a show called Children's Corner. Yeah, I, it was a bit... Uh, like, it's the first episode, but the... Uh, and we'll... There is no acknowledgement that it's the first episode. No, though. and the premise of the first episode is how, wow, every everything is so different. That's over there, and the tree is on yeah. the left. Madness. Yeah, and it's, because I think for a lot of people, I don't remember, I think, like, for a lot of people, this was the first time they were seeing it. Because mm-hmm. it moved around, I think it was just on, like, public access in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. For a while, so it's we- sort of an episode that is in a weird way written just for people in Pittsburgh, and everybody else around the world is just like, I don't know what's going on. 
uh, which All is us. Else. Which is us, yeah. So Mr. anyways, Rogers. Mr. Rogers has a swing he wants to show us out on his front porch, which he got from a grandmother friend. Mm -hmm. It's crooked. And then he swings the dickens out of that swing. Oh, he's not going forward and back. He is, he's no, all over he's the board. back and forth, side to side. He's swinging. It made me very uncomfortable, frankly. His swinging was all over the place. He also taught us what a ladder was before this. So then he, this is when he goes in and does the first thing that kind of blows my mind, which is he places a phone call to the land to of, the of make believe. Yeah. Uh, which is like a, a one of those can phones with the strings, which at some point he forgets how to use, and he's talking yeah. while it's against yeah. He it. has a lot of trouble while he's doing this bit talking. To, clearly, nobody is feeding him lines or anything, and he sometimes forgets which part of the when he's supposed to be listening to the can and when he's supposed to be talking into the can. So yeah, at this point, uh, he uses his hotline to the land of make believe. Which does he call for the trolley to come? Um, I, I think he's just calling. To check in, see what's up with Edgar. I don't know who Edgar is. Oh, yeah, Edgar. He's Edgar is Edgar. His, his man on the inside. Uh, and something that I don't believe was present in the later episodes is when uh, when he's thinking about the land of make-believe, or maybe make-believing it, Yeah. Uh, he pulls he pulls out a, a hideaway bed. Yeah, he's, and got he, a, he's got a special imagining bed. It's frankly a little weird. I mean, maybe it's just sort of like, a, well, what's a fun thing we can do? These people are what kids are watching this show uh -huh. at the sofa. Let's like we're children across America pulling out their rollout beds to to watch the middle section of Mister Rogers' neighborhood because that's a hard thing to do if you're a child mm -hmm. by yourself. Um. So yeah, I think at this point we get into yeah the uh, the he trolley... also looks at the land of make believe through a telescope. Yes, he has a, he has a, he has many uh, means of uh, interaction with the land of make believe, which yeah. is uh, as walls... I understand it, he can't go there or chooses not to go there. But he has many like he can talk on the phone to people who live there. I mean, he has a telescope maybe... to see there. He might because we'll. Get I mean, to, yeah, we'll get to that later. Get to, so then the 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 chintzy trolley comes out. Yeah, and tells it is, him it's barely moving. <laughs> this is not this is not the the pristine model railroad quality trolley that I have come to expect from Mister Rogers. I'm right. not even sure it's moving under its own power. There may be a string pulling it. It's um. So I guess now let's go to the land of make believe. Yes, let's let's go. Let's go to the land of make believe. To the land of make believe. Make, make believe. Let's go. Go to the land of make believe. All right. And then we go to the land of make believe, where everything is nuts. Oh yeah. Well, the the trolley informs Mister Rogers right. uh, that uh, Lady Elaine Fairchild um, is using her magical powers. <laughs> yes, which you she, forget she has, but no, she, she well, she has established that she's a witch, basically. Yeah, she's a mischievous Baba Yaga figure. Yeah, in and the she's land of used her magic. Abilities uh, to over the weekend <laughs> rearrange uh, the major landmarks in the land of make believe. Uh, yeah, and so uh, when we first get to the land of make believe, uh, Mister Joe Negri is uh, giving uh, us a tour and expressing his confusion that everything is in a different. Everything's just been moved around. But I have no idea where anything's supposed to be because yeah. this is the first episode. It's new, yeah. I think the tree event, because right now the tree's right up against the wall. Yeah, it's more in the middle I think the tree on. at some point moves out to the middle. Um, and I think the way it is right now it's just because every single puppet that Joe Negri interacts with through this section is Fred Rogers. Right, he's voiced by the same. And there's not really Mr. any cuts. Rogers. So while he's... Well, Joe's meandering across the set to talk to the next person. I have to imagine that Fred Rogers is just booking it backstage, running to the next set and putting on two new puppets to talk to. Right. So he goes around interviewing the various yeah, he talks, uh, citizens. Uh, we meet Daniel Tiger. Daniel Tiger, in yeah. his clock. Um, um, and then we meet X the Owl. And yeah, he knocks on both of those doors at the same time, yeah, which I appreciate. It's a nice bit. Uh, the scale in this, it must be very difficult to coexist with uh, human-sized characters and puppet-sized yeah, characters. Yeah, because you're just knocking on two doors. And, and Henrietta Pussycat, who is upsetting-looking, I would say. <laughs> and she's not down with change. No. I, well, I would Very relatable. I think that uh, X the Owl is less on board with changes he lets on. Like, he definitely seemed like a... I think he's putting on a brave face. Yeah, definitely. With his own, like, it's like a treasure hunt. This is great. Yeah, he's he's trying to lie to himself. And okay. I, 
I I don't think he uh, okay. I don't think he's really coping on the inside. So then uh he Joe goes over to talk to King Friday. Yes. King Friday is upset for because Joe is, has the audacity to talk to him without an appointment. Yeah, um, and so then he goes over to the phone booth which I assume is how Edgar or, I guess. And I kind of, I remember the phone booth being in later episodes. Like, it gets redone up, but I remember there being a phone booth. It's just a booth with a tin can hanging from the ceiling Mm -hmm. that is used when somebody who is not a puppet in the land of make-believe needs to talk with somebody from out of town. Mm -hmm. Um, So then he calls up, I guess, King Friday's secretary to book an appointment. Uh, Yes, his secretary's name is uh, Miss Prolificate, I have written down. That's a pretty good name. Uh, And so he gets an appointment with King Friday in the next uh, two... Two and two-tenths of a second. Two and two-tenths of a second. So he's got to run over and crawl under... Yeah, by my math, he was four seconds late. four seconds late, which King Friday points out, and he's upset about how late he was. Um, and I mean, it's it's not a huge distance from the, the phone booth to the castle, but you've got to get under that trolley bridge, which I feel like is lower than it would come to be in later years. He's he's really he's just about crawling to get under that thing. Yeah, so then uh King Friday uh tasks citizen ne- ne- Negri. Negri. It's Negri. Negri okay. with the task of uh tracking down Tracking down Lady Lane Fairchild. Who is King Friday's sister? I'm not sure how they're related, or if they're related, we know she's nobility because she's I think Lady Elaine Fairchild. In a, in a segment that I saw from a later in the series, I think uh, King Friday's son, the prince, refers to Lady Elaine Fairchild as his aunt or okay. aunt. I'm not sure. Maybe it's like his sister in law. Maybe. Or, so they've got sort of like a King Arthur and Morgan Le Fay thing going on. Mm-hmm. Where where he's royalty and she's again a mischievous sorceress, right? Who who runs and she? What's the word he uses? Uh, I don't know what you're referring to, but I do see in my notes here. I wrote down something a word that I didn't know. Oh yeah, he 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 basically wants to bring Lady Lane Fairchild up on charges. Uh, so he, he used wants the to, word arraignment, an arraignment, arraignment. Yeah, he basically wants to drag her into court for rearranging. I mean, I think that's belief. I think that's fair. I don't know about you. I, I suppose it is probably if the Marvel universe is having this civil war over like uh, superheroes having to register. Uh, I think that uh, the land of make believe could benefit from a similar. Like, I think maybe you think Lady Lane Fairchild should file some paperwork before she yeah uses before she uses her, her powers. magical powers to rearrange. I mean, fair enough. She does rearrange the the town for. I mean, maybe maybe this no is getting reason. a little too political, but... Uh, I mean, it's a show about a king. Politics are inevitable. It's true. And then Daniel Tiger shows up again, squeezing his way past the Yeah, it, it really seems like anybody's allowed wandering aimlessly through that castle. Yeah, it? well, I mean, as we have established, sort of, just about everybody here is somehow related right. to royalty. Um, and so then... Uh, He's not sure where to start, and so uh, Mr. Joe Negri decides to write a letter to Mr. Rogers. Yeah, he's going to help him find um, and, uh, Lady Elaine Fairchild. Andrew, I asked you uh, yesterday that when we're watching these episodes, I wanted you to have uh, one thing that you'd like right. to talk about. Right. Um, and I've got one or two things, but I'm counting on your thing being my second thing. So yeah, my first thing... My first thing is here. Okay. Um, in that, uh, Mr. Rogers is imagining this all, right? Like, this is his make believe. I mean, yes. Uh, but. Ostensibly. But then they, uh, Mr. Joe Negri tries to communicate with him by sending a letter on the trolley. Right. And the trolley arrives back in the quote unquote real world. Right. Uh, Mr. Rogers makes kind of an acknowledging, like, ah, here's the trolley to bring me my letter. <laughs> because <laughs> he, along he with us, witnessed, witnessed this whole thing through the collective imagination. But he hasn't bothered to tell Mr. Joe Negri that he's watching his yeah. every move. I mean, also, there's just a phone. He could just call him. 
I suppose. The trolley is it's, it's certainly an Just impersonal trying to make method the, uh, of We're trying to make the trolley feel important. I, I mean, the trolley is very important. The trolley is the conduit between this whole thing. But, I mean, we've got a telescope and a magic phone booth. Is yeah, it? but, I mean, you don't remember either of those. The trolley is the one that maintains. But, um, yeah. So, I'm... Well, maybe we'll get into what is coming next in the next episode. I am very curious to hear what Lady Lane Fairchild has to say for herself. <laughs> as to her motives for <laughs> rearranging the town. Just general trickery, just, I think. She was probably bored. Yeah. Just seemed like something she'd do. Maybe she just wanted to teach King Fry. I think, I mean, we haven't even met her yet in this podcast series, but I think she might be my favorite person. Oh, I am already considering whether she needs to be the podcast thumbnail. I mean, I mean she probably does anyways. Because she's iconic and kind of creepy and weird looking, but also she seems great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, she's definitely the character that I'm time. looking forward to most. Yeah, uh, and the character that I was most afraid of as a child, I would say. Yeah, well, that's I think because they 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 fixed up the forehead work on on <laughs> Henrietta Pussycat. She really looks like she somebody pulled her out of an attic H- and said, Henrietta. "Yes, this could go on the show." Well, I I find that with a lot of the puppets. Like, I mean, uh, yes, they all have a haunted like, Victorian look to them. Daniel Tiger's stripes are fading, and like... I mean, he was never really Tiger Stripes, he was just sort of like a tabby. I, it does seem, though, that all of these puppets are like, at the first episode, a million years old. Yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> um, um, Was Daniel Tiger wearing his watch this episode? Uh, I don't. I I didn't notice. I didn't notice but I didn't, either. I didn't know that he had a watch. I oh, know no, that he, he lives in a he clock. He wears a watch and he lives in a clock. He has he's a little bit neurotic. He's he's got a, he's got concerns about time. I guess um, he's always late. So I think that wraps up the land of make believe. Yes. Um, um, so that was the land of make believe. That was the land of make believe and boom mics. So we're uh, we're back now in. The real world, I guess? Yes, this is the real world. Or is it? And then, so now Mr. Rogers takes a trip to his his real life Yeah, so let's get get back to the... He got got a message earlier, we sort of skipped over it, but a very, a very, um... Broad. Oh yeah, we, Mr. McFeely. we had Mr. McFeely, who was a uh, who was in a, a terrible rush. He was in a terrible. He was he he's a wackier character than I remember him being. Yeah, and I think uh, he mellowed out over the years. This yeah, is a Mr. very <laughs> Mr. Rogers in this episode sort of expresses some concern over his friend's lifestyle choice. He's like, yeah. boy, that that Mr. McFeely, he's uh, he leads a very fast lifestyle, yeah. but he's, that's what he called his company. So he got a he got a telegram from his friend, um, Mrs. What is it, Russellite? Russellite, Mrs. Russellite, Mrs. Russellite, um, <laughs> saying that she can't come over, but if he could swing by later, mm-hmm. just just to hang out, that would be nice, right? Um, and he sends back a message through Mister McFeely that yes, he will. And here's an interesting thing: mm-hmm. he the charge for a return message is two. Not two currency. Not two, at just a two. And Mr. Rogers reaches into his pocket and hands him maybe a coin, maybe just miming something, and said, here's a two. <laughs> so I don't know what, I don't know what the currency is of whatever Just a little, paper, little paper numbers. I yeah, think. or something. <laughs> just, a, just a two. Because there's not like what, like, I don't know that America really had a two anything hmm. piece. At that point. Like, I think there have been $2 coins. I don't think they were in wide circulation in the in the 60s. So anyways, he goes to meet Mrs. Russell. Yeah, now, uh, can I... Uh, I yeah. What I was expecting here is, uh, like, based on my experience with uh, later episodes right. in the series, um, I heard about uh, this... Uh, meeting with Mrs. Russellite, and I was fully expecting Mr. Rogers to go to the house, and uh, she would, like, teach him something about crocheting. Right, or something like that. I think he mentions, as he's leaving, oh, she has a collection of lampshades. I, I missed that. No, he definitely says she has a collection of lampshades, and I'm like, okay, so we're gonna look at some lampshades. And boy, do we ever. 
Yeah, I'm assuming this is the thing that you want. This is to talk this about. is I think the thing that we all want to talk about in yeah, this episode. Yeah, I was I was wondering uh, as we were proceeding through the episode whether uh, whether we were going to have whether something whether to... Mister Rogers was really the gold mine that I <laughs> that I believed it to be that, <laughs> when yeah, I decided yeah. to make a podcast. But but, uh, but no, this this fairly knocked me on my on my back. Yeah. Um, so. I, let me just read you my notes because yeah, I was taking okay. notes as we were writing this, this episode. Will be good. Uh, I wrote the name Russellite equals, and then I've got girlfriend with a question mark uh, because Mister Rogers at the beginning of the scene is definitely flirting with her. The uh, scene progressed. I revised my notes uh, so it says uh, Russellite equals girlfriend, and then I've crossed that off. Uh, and then I've written, or local artist slash insane person. I mean, that checks. Um, then I noticed that she had a wedding ring, so I wrote okay. married. Well, also, her name's Mrs. Russellite. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, so, uh, let's what is, talk what about this. What do you do with her lampshade collection, Stephen? Why don't you break it down for us? Well, let me tell you. Uh, okay. Mrs. Russellite, uh, is very passionate about lampshades because she likes to wear them as hats. Okay. And so she invited Mr. Rogers over to her house uh, right. in order to... Um, I don't know if it was even in order, because she said she was dusting. So I think she just happened to have her collection of lampshades, which she wears, yes. out for cleaning. Uh-huh. Um, and she's got... And it's not a new thing, because she, she references older, smaller lampshades that she wore when she was a child. So you get the impression that this is a woman who, as a child, wore lampshades on her head and never stopped. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, she talks about how they're sort of leftover lampshades that her mother doesn't use anymore. So I guess she's still getting them from her mother. And another thing that she talks about, which is interesting, is she talks about her very fancy lampshade which she wears on her head uh that she wears when she's visiting king friday yes now this is where things get weird this is a little weird i mean this is so not without precedent exactly but i've never seen it so it's a land of m make believe yeah but also some characters in the real world like maybe all of them mrs russellite yeah uh goes there physically to visit yeah. On a regular basis. I mean, this isn't, this isn't completely, because I know, I think, Joe Negri, mm -hmm. later to become Handyman Negri, shows up in both Make Believe and Without. I know the chef does. There's okay. a chef at some point. But yeah, they, this is the first time I can think of somebody in the real world specifically talking about going to visit. Right. And I mean, at that an point, it, place. at this point, uh, like the the lampshades had been on screen for long enough and just being used nonchalantly as headgear that I was like starting to like like yeah I I, I get this sure this makes sense like Maybe I was, she's from the land of make I was really starting that to would buy explain it. her behavior more yeah it's um, it's just about it feels like five minutes it's probably closer to one. Before Mr. Rogers even acknowledges that, oh, wearing a lampshade on your head is a bit unusual. Fire. He's an insightful guy. Um, and uh, and then at the end of the scene, um, uh, Mr. Rogers asks to borrow one of the lampshades. I don't know lampshades. if he asks to borrow it or if he's just looking at it and, and she says, oh, you can borrow that. So he does. I, no, I think he, he asks, okay, if, he he can, asks, he asks if he can take it with the intent to wear it. Uh, but then later we see that he just immediately puts it in the closet and then says, Mrs. Russellite will be by to pick this up. So yeah. now, at this point, I added to my list of notes, uh, maybe maybe he is flirting with her, though. <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe this is all just a ploy to get her to come over later. I mean, later. he has to borrow the lampshade hat yeah. with the intent of wearing it. He immediately puts it in the closet. I mean, to be and fair, he tosses it up in the air a couple times to demonstrate again the difference between up and down. Right. Which is which is not really what this episode is about, but they cover it nonetheless. But it seems to me that he makes it clear that the only reason he has to borrow this was so that she would have to yeah, visit to get it back. He does put it immediately in the closet. And I like, a, he puts it in the closet where one would normally put a hat. Mm -hmm. Which is fun. Yeah, uh, so that basically brings us to the end that's, of the episode. That's the first thrilling episode. Uh, he closes of off Mr. with uh, 
what doesn't seems... close the closet, which drives me crazy. But, but he, he sort of swings it closed and it goes halfway and stops and then he... But he does close off the episode uh, with a, an older, like a first draft, it feels like, of the what would later become the closing song. There's a few different closing songs that they've used over mm. the years. I saw that. I didn't pay attention to what they were, but I did know there were a few. He, he takes off his... No, he keeps his cardigan on. He puts on a, a jacket and then a coat. And then he just so he is he is properly dressed to the nines as he heads out of his house and goes home or to work to work like maybe this is just his lunch break and or he... also goes behind the fake wall ends the show and goes home because yeah because he does that's... call it his set yeah there is there is very little attempt at at like it's it's there's no fourth wall but there I is mean a we wall. really. Um, I guess it's kind of like how some of his neighbors use their real name on the show and some of them don't. The actor playing Joe Negri is Joe Negri. The actress playing Mrs. Russellite is... I forget her first name, but her last name is Russell. Okay. It's it's a whole thing. And I guess we will get into it more next week. Uh, um, yeah. With the next episode, we'll find out what, what if any, uh, Lady Lane Fairchild's motives are. For rearranging the town. Yeah, I'm excited to discover. Uh, so that'll be episode uh, two. And uh, so we'll be back next week with that episode. Uh, and we'll have some new ideas for you. Um, I, Andrew, I know you'll have things that you'd like to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will too. Let's make the most of this beautiful day Since we're together we might as well say Wouldn't you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my podcast? Most people don't wear lampshades, but that's just your well, hobby, isn't it? Well, you know, I like to get dressed up with them and pretend.